Happy New Year! No, it's not January 1st, but when the clock struck midnight this morning, hundreds and co a new season started for hundreds of coaches and players all across Western New York. And we're here at North Tonawanda High School to celebrate that new season. Behind me, the Lumberjacks have a lot to celebrate as new old coach Eric Jancy is leading them in practice on the 2018 season. Of course, Jancy led the Lumberjacks to a state title in 2009 before leaving the program in 2010. He is excited to be back. We're going to have a special day one kickoff of the 2018-2019 scholastic season in Western New York. I'll be talking about division alignments, coaching changes, and the biggest storylines upcoming this season. We'll also have interviews with Yancey and some of his players as they begin their, their 2018 journey today. Before I let you go, I want to tell you a few announcements for, w for WNY Athletics. Uh, this week, our wonderful staff has put together over two dozen team individual football previews. We're going to be rolling them out this week, starting today with our Class AA's. Tomorrow, our Class A's down through to Friday with our Class D and Monsignor Martin previews. You can find more information on our Twitter and Facebook pages. Myself, Frank Wolf, and the entire staff were proud to announce that WNY Athletics is now the official home of Section 6 football and field hockey. Schedules, rosters, scores, and much more will all be available on our website, WNYAthletics.com, this season. We want to welcome you to the 2018-2019 Scholastic Season. Live from North Tonawanda, this is Francis Beck for WNY Athletics. I'm sure you all know the story, but in case you don't, I'll tell it to you anyway. Last June, Bishop Tymon Athletic Director and Head Football Coach Charlie Comerford stepped down from his positions unexpectedly, leaving the South Buffalo School and, his state and its students in a state of unease. Eventually, quarterback Matt Myers and some of his teammates left for West Seneca West. There, they combined with an already up-and-coming Indians talent and went on a wonderful perf and went on a perfect 13-0 season to win the New York State Public High School Athletic Association Class A title. Comerford didn't find a new home in 2018, in 2017, but we'll get more to him later. If last year was the year of the transfer, then this season is surely the year of the coaching changes. 17 football programs in Western New York are going through coaching changes this season, but it's not the abnormally, abnormally high number is what's making the news. It's the who and the where. Eric Yancey is one of three state title winning coaches on the move this offseason. Behind me, he's leading the North Tonawanda Lumberjacks in pra football Lumberjacks in, on the first day of practice this in the 2018 season. We talked to him and a couple of his players after practice. I'm with Coach Eric Yancey of the North Tonawanda Football Lumberjacks as he just completed his first day back as head coach of the Lumberjacks. Uh, coach, what what was it like to be back out here today? I know this program has meant so much to you. What was that it like? It was exciting to get the first day underway, you know, the first official day. We've been working with the kids all summer, so I kind of had an idea about what was going in. They kind of knew what to expect, so it went... I thought the transition was pretty pretty easy today. Is it weird to think about, you know, these kids that you're coaching right now or, you know, elementary school when you left the program originally? Is that just Yeah, you know, somebody brought that up the other day. I thought that was interesting. You know, the uh, Colin Beach was actually in my daughter when my kids went here. He was in her second grade class. Stuff like that. So yeah, I mean they uh, yeah, it's interesting. I, I guess I'm getting old. I didn't think I was. <laughs> I look in the mirror, I look the same. <laughs> and you got that turf field over in the back, you know, getting ready. It's almost there. Uh, when you look at that, what do you think? There's a lot of anticipation, I think, for everybody in the community, for the kids, for the coaches. You know, it's going to be an exciting night when we break that thing open and, and get it going. And hopefully start a, a new tradition on it of winning and excellence. What was your message to your kids today? The message was just, you know, watch each other's backs, keep each other out of trouble. You know, we have to take care of discipline first type thing. And then just work hard, you know, break old habits that they had that were good or not good or etc. So, is there any, you know, is there any pressure because it's your second tenure and your first tenure, you know, went so well with the state title? Any, you know, pressure that 
people might expect things to turn around quickly? Um, I don't know if there's pressure. I mean, we pressure ourselves as coaches. We do a lot of work in the off season to prepare for stuff. So, you know, it's just a matter of if kids can stay healthy and things like that. There's a lot of factors that go into it. But, uh, I mean, in terms of work in the off season, and uh, I'm confident that, that we'll be ready to go, you know, and put the best product we can on the field. And finally, what are the expectations for this year? Uh, you know, we certainly, like any year, we want to just win. We want to win every game and, you know, certainly win week one against Niagara, Niagara Wheatfield. That's our goal right now. And then, you know, get into the playoffs, obviously, and try and make some noise. You know, just keep getting better every week so that by the time we hit playoff time, we're peaking and we're ready to go. Matthew Manji, fullback and linebacker, senior. James Holler, offensive and defensive lineman, senior. Tom Beach, defensive back, wide receiver, senior. Connor Demetier, kicker and wide receiver, senior. I'm at North Tonawanda High School as the Jacks open up their first practice of the 2018 season. Uh, guys, I'm sure you know Coach Yancey, what he was, what he meant to this program, winning a state title. You guys were probably in what elementary school then. What do you remember about that time and about him as a coach back then? Just the excitement that went around all of North Tonawanda. There was a lot, there was a lot of, we, I remember the parade, I remember going to that. Um, there was just a lot of buzz about how, how unprecedented that, that was at the time. And it was, a, it was a really great feeling. We hope to bring that back again for our last year. Yeah, I, would just, I just, I like to say, basically the same thing he said, just, just like the energy he brought to our city and like no one really thought that they would go that far. Like they knew they had a good team and like, they were winning around Western New York, but once they got to like playing teams from like inner New York City, and no one really thought they would go that far and keep winning, but just the mentality they had, and then he's installing with us now too. And what does it mean today to actually play for them in this first day of practice? What does that mean to you guys? Um, it's really something. We know he's a good coach, so we know he's going to make the program a lot better, and we're just excited to see what he can do. And of course, what was it? What was it like to be out there today with your teammates, with the helmets on, first day of practice? It feels amazing. Get the pads popping again. Can't wait to get the shoulder pads. Always on. Can't wait. together as a team, we're just looking to work hard every day, get better as a team. Looking at how we feel week one. Just gonna work hard. Absolutely. Work hard until September first. And finally, what are the expectations for this season? Definitely uh, trying to make it to the Ralph. Take week by week, yep. work hard every week, that's what we gotta do. The second biggest shock of this off season was came down in the southern tier. After 23 seasons, 221 wins, 9 sectional titles, and 2 state titles, Kurt Fisher decided to leave Maple Grove after what he claims was year-long harassment directed from certain members of the community directed not only at him, but at certain members of his family. He eventually found a new home in Chautauqua, at neighboring Chautauqua Lake and takes over that program, which now combines with Westfield this year. And, Ju and Justin Haft will take over at Maple Grove. The third state title-winning coach to leave was Gene Tundo after 35 seasons. He leaves the Orchard Park program. Craig Dana will take over there. Yancey's former coaching rival, Chuck Tilly, also finds a new home. He was at Tonawanda until he left in 2009. He now takes over at Frontier. Just when you thought all the craziness was over with coaching changes, last week, WNY Athletics learned of two more. Two learned of two more in the Buffalo Public Schools. At Hutch Tech, Tony Trezillo, Yancey's successor here at North Tonawanda, took over the job at, for the engineers. And at McKinley, we also learned that Brian Hillary was stepping down from his position on Wednesday. Micah Harris will take over in the interim. Another Kenmore West alum adds his name to the list of former Jerry Tutwiler players to take over their own programs. Uh, Jeremy Zimmer takes over at Sweet Home. At Depew, Mark Dorenzio takes over for the Wildcats. Marcus Weiss is in charge now at Roy Hart. At Portville, Gary Sweatland steps down after a long career. Josh Brooks takes over for him. And at Lakeshore, Dan Russell takes over for the Eagles. 
Those are your coaching changes for this upcoming 2018 season. We will have more if there are any more updates at McKinley this uh, season. We'll now go on to talk about division alignments. We have some changes as far as that in both Section 6 and Monsignor Martin. Class AA drops from eight teams down to 11. Jamestown, Frontier, and Niagara Wheatfield all go down to Class A. Only eight that, and since there are only eight teams in Class AA, they will now play an extra game in the regular season, and only eight four teams will be able to make the playoffs. Class A, where you see your biggest changes. They go to three divisions, and this year, they, those divisions will not be by geography, but by beds numbers. In the Class A1, those three teams that drop down from AA will be with West Seneca West, Frontier, Kenmore West, and Hamburg. Certainly a lot of new rivalries there. In the A2, happens to look a lot like the previous A North divisions of of the past few seasons. It's filled with McKinley, Williamsville East, Kenmore East, North Tonawanda, Sweet Home, and Grand Island. And the A3, which could be one of two, one of the two toughest divisions in the entire section, will be West Seneca East, Williamsville South, South Park, Amherst, the new Maritime team, and Star Point. Class B1, probably the other toughest division in the section, includes, of course, last year's Class B finalist, Cheetawaga and Maryvale. Also dropping down for May in that division will be Iroquois. Class In Class B3, Burgard drops down, will be in that division this year. They drop down from Class B1 after they lose some of their other schools that combined with the program in previous years. Class C is now two divisions of seven teams. Certainly a lot bigger than five, te than five teams from before. And in Class D, only down to four teams. They will be each playing a home-and-home -home against each other this season. Other big storylines this season. We talked about Charlie Comerford earlier. He didn't have a new home in 2018. How New football home. However, he did get a job as the athletic director at Maritime Charter. And ever since he got that job, he worked hard to put together the area's first charter school team. Today, he is leading a combined Maritime Charter Health Sciences Charter football team in their first ever practice this morning. Other big storylines for the upcoming 2018 season. In Class AA, Lancaster. Wonderful last two years. Two, two sectional titles in a row. They were also made it to the state final last year. However, they graduate many of their starters from the past two seasons. We'll see if they can reload. Clarence, however, returns most of their lineup after going five and four, four and five last year, including quarterback Jack Putney. They could be, they could have a big year in Double A. Williamsville North, the finalists, the other finalist in Class Double A, they re. They return quarterback Joe Nunzal, but they, loo they lose uh, wide receiver Jacob Orlando, and they graduate both their top two rushers. At Orchard Park, Jack Sharp will be the, a second-year quarterback for the Quakers with new coach Craig Dana taking over. In Class A, South Park returns Humphrey. They're primed for a big year after, making, after falling to... Uh, West Seneca West at the stadium last year. Also at West Seneca East. It's going to be life after the Marino brothers. Jared and Jacob now graduate and move on to other things. However, coach Jim Marino will stay on as the head coach. Jordan Parks. Very turbulent offseason for him. If you haven't seen the story, uh, Winston Wilcox story in the Niagara is that you better read it. He had an irregular heartbeat. Wasn't sure if he was even going to be able to play, but football was the last thing from his mind. But today, he's on the field for the Falcons being their starting quarterback. And, of course, at star point, Aaron Chase ch ch changed the program from a running program to an air attack. He already holds five, five school records as a quarterback as he has into his, his senior year. The Spartans were riddled with injuries towards the end of the season. If they can stay healthy, look for them to make a big run in Class A. 
in Class B. As we mentioned earlier, Iroquois, a longtime Class A power, drops down. They have a quarterback coming back, Ethan Harold. Uh, he could be really good this year. Also, for the two state finalists, Keyshawn Beal, Rashad Law, Conley Cup finalist from last year. They are back with their respective teams in Cheektowaga and Maryvale, primed for strong seasons. A Class C, another Conley Cup finalist, has already figured out where he's going next. He committed to Rutgers back in June to play quarterback. He will be leading the Trojans in Class C this year. Also, in the team that beat them at the stadium last year, actually the last two years, Cleve Hill, they always have a strong running game, but this year they will have the state champion winning 4 by one outdoor team all in their backfield this year, so they are certainly going to be a force to be reckoned with this season. In Class D, as we mentioned earlier, only four teams they will be playing home and homes this season. Also, could Maple Grove be taking a step back with Kurt Fisher leaving? We'll see how that works out with new coach Justin Hath, again, a former player of Fisher's. And in CSP, it's and in CSP with quarterback Garrett Hinsdale back for his second year, only a junior as the starting quarterback. They had a strong year, and with Maple Grove and now Frank, and Franklin Elligaville leaving, they could be primed to take Class D this year, which could not only mean winning the section, but as far as the sections done in Class D the past few years, they can make their way to states. In the Monsignor Martin, they, ha they are now into two divisions this year, A and B. A is the larger schools with Canisius, St. Joe's, and St. Francis. The B division will be Bishop Tymon, Cardinal O'Hara, and St. Mary's of Lancaster. The big news out of Monsignor Martin this summer Casey Kelly transferring to Mallard Creek High School back in July. We broke that story. Uh, his picture was found on a Max Prep page for Mallard Creek High School in North Carolina, and eventually it the news was confirmed to us. Uh, so big loss for Joe's there. They also lose their top running back, Jane Lofton, who the school announced officially would not be back for this season after his summer. The big... The other big question is, can Canisius reload? They graduate Jace Johnson and a host of other multi-year starters for Canisius who led them to two straight Monsignor Martin League titles. They have a couple guys transferring in, including quarterback Christian Veyu, who looks to take over that top spot, who will be competing, actually, for that top quarterback spot. O'Hare, as we mentioned, or as we just mentioned, is in Class B. They return a lot of all Western New York players, they, including co-underclass Trench Trophy underclassman uh, winner from last year, Stephen Boyd, on the line. They also have Justin Hemphill and a quarterback, C.J. Masters, a kid who can really throw the football. And in South Buffalo, the team we started with, or the program we started with earlier, Bishop Tymon. Last year, Joe Licata came in, took over for Comfort as the athletic director and football coach. They had a really tough season last year, but they only graduate 10 seniors. And the question is, can they rebound after a tough 2017 season? Before I let you go, I wanted to tell you that our wonderful staff has put together nearly two dozen team individual football previews for the upcoming 2018 season. We are putting them out this week, starting with Class AA today, on through tomorrow will be Class A, down through till Friday, where we'll have our Class D and Monsignor Martin pre previews out. Be sure to wa look out for them. Our staff has worked amazingly hard. A lot of great information for you. Also, I have, we have a very special announcement. Uh, we're proud to announce at WM Athletics that we are now the official home for Section 6 football and field hockey. Scores, rosters, schedules, and more will all be available on WNYAthletics.com. My name is Francis Beck with WNY Athletics.